as promised, uh, the second step in uh, breaking out of the box or unlocking the fretboard or whatever you want to call that uh, process whereby you um, begin to learn to improvise and solo spontaneously and creatively and musically without being um, controlled or overly influenced by just memorized patterns. Uh, the, the method is to learn a classic country song that features six string guitar and pedal steel and then just think very carefully about how that melody just naturally shows up out of the very simple chord shapes of the very simple chord progressions. If you haven't seen my overly long rambling rationale for this, uh, check out the previous video um, with the swinging doors explain a little bit about how you hit that plateau and how this is a method to uh, maybe, you know, uh, improve beyond that. Uh, that's an enjoyable method. It was brought to my attention that this is not a quick and easy uh, tips and tricks kind of thing. That's true. This is not a no-brainer. This is like an all-brainer. It's all about thinking and it's not really for beginners. This assumes that you have hit that plateau, that you already know how to play. You can play well, but you feel a little bit trapped by memorized patterns and things and that you don't really have a full uh, understanding of how to move around confidently on the fretboard. So it's going to assume that you know how to make those very few common chord shapes for common simple chords. Now, I'm not talking about like a F sharp diminished flat 11 sharp 13. I'm talking about A, right? Can you find the one, the three and the five? And hopefully the, uh, the, the dominant seven. Because if you can get those four anchor points, then you can very, very easily fill in any missing blanks if you need to get to the nine or you know, to kind of move your way around the chord and know what you're doing. So you kind of need to have those basics. What I'm going to do this song, we're going to do a, a song in the um, well-loved key of F sharp. Why F sharp? Because there's no open chord... Um, version of it. It's going to force you to kind of think of where you are at all times. Um, it's a 1-4-5 progression though, so it's really simple. It's F sharp, it's, it's B, and it is D flat. Uh, you'll need to know the sevens of those and a couple other shapes, and we'll talk about those after we hear the song. So um, this is the Merle Haggard version of Little Old Wine Drinker Me. He didn't write it. It was actually, I think, Mel Tillis, and I remember it from like a Dean Martin version. This is not a song that Merle Haggard is, you know, well known for, but it is Roy Nichols and Ralph Mooney again. Um, if you're not a fan of Roy Nichols and Ralph Mooney, I would strongly recommend that you uh, burn your guitars and never talk about music to anyone, ever. I'm just gonna play a little bit of the song and then we'll um, slow it down and uh, talk about what that, what that was. Um, let me check the volume, I should check the volumes first. It should be kind of okay. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs>
filler riffs during the verse. But um, so what was that? Um, that intro. Stop right there. Um, that's F sharp. So before you start, you need to picture this F sharp and maybe this F sharp. B, just that one. We'll just start from there. That's that. That's the B. F sharp. B. Then this. A lot of weird bending there, right? But what that really was, um, that, that's this F sharp. And then, that's, that's that F sharp chord. There's some double stops going on there, but generally, that's F sharp. That, that's F sharp, it's right here. Those are the two notes. But that's the chord, that they're pulled right from that chord. F sharp. And then the verse, don't get too judgy again on the vocals, just to kind of give you a scratch track. Um, but, uh, that's the F sharp. in California. Uh, that's that's just that F sharp chord. There, I'm thinking about thinking about that F sharp chord. There's a little seven chord. Again, remember I said you're going to need to know the ones, the threes, the fives, and the seven. That's the seven. You could do it here. And then, instead of doing the B, uh, the the D flat here, you, you do it here, and it's. But that whole time, I'm thinking. That's just from that chord. Sitting in a honky in Chicago. I think I did a little. Uh, Again, that's F sharp, that's the seven. And the broken horn and you can, it's just the, you know that, like if you, um, if it was a C, C7, that same, you just, right? Call it a C sharp, it's a D flat, seven. And there's a low. Again, it's just kind of playing around in that. F sharp to uh, F sharp shape, and then um, for that, if you want to call it the chorus, I match the man. It's a that's that's the, the shape right there. I can see it, or maybe I'm, maybe I'm thinking about that shape. You know, seven, Tennessee. And then here's this interesting riff. But you want to think of this shape of the chord. So. So, Tennessee. I'm, that's. I'm seeing that chord shape right there. Looks just like a C major, but it's up one fret. To seven. But that little walk up, I'm just picturing. Picturing those two chord shapes. When this is the thing. Now that, I'm just thinking of this F sharp or maybe um, this F sharp with that seven. That's going right up into the. The five. Who's the fool in the cold? 
That. I'm just thinking of that F sharp shape. Maybe that F sharp. And then that cool walk up into the solo. Um, pretty tired when you hear it that way, but it's just some string bends to kind of bring it up into unison. A little feel there. Went a little far there, but um, that's the same kind of riffing and string bending as in the intro. You're thinking about that F sharp. So the whole time I'm playing that, I can picture that F sharp chord, picture that F sharp chord. I'm not blindly just memorizing it and playing it from memory. I can see those chords while I do it. So that if I wanted to do something different, that's kind of cool. That chord. What was it? Cool. Sorry, noodling, but doing it because I'm looking at those chord shapes and seeing like if I got sick of playing it the same way, maybe that's something I would do differently. And you can kind of do it musically. I wouldn't just resort to a, um, you know, that or oh, down here. And that's the only two ways I know to do that. You can actually look at well. There's an F sharp. There's an F sharp. What about what about that F sharp? How about that? All right. Um. How about that? Kind of lost my place. The solo. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Now all of that is if you do it down here. That's that. Um, you know, D flat, C sharp, just an octave higher. And then, that's, that's just that chord. That's when it goes to the B. I'm picturing that, picturing that chord. In my mind, I'm picturing kind of uh, the shape of a G. If it were down here, I'm picturing that in F sharp. And the reason I picked the song in F sharp is to kind of break out of that, always looking for the dots and always relating it to the open chords. You really have to stop and this can take a while. You're trying to see something that isn't there. You're trying to see something that's invisible by looking at it. And until you can see it kind of superimposed, you have to have some kind of creative vision to see the invisible, but there it is. And from that, now you can... <laughs> you can see how those melodies come right out of the chords. So I have a backing track for this one. Again, you can slow it down, play along. Um, I didn't want to give you a note for note transcription of what finger to put where because you might want to form these out of different chord shapes, which is great as long as you are aware of what chord you are pulling from. And every time you do a riff, when you go, that can't be from memory. You have to see what you're doing and see that it's just, it's that chord and you're working your way up. To, to that chord, you can see that F sharp every time you do it. Um, when you do that, you need to be able to see that that's the chord underneath it. So, again, not the most coherent, but hopefully enough to give you a flavor of it so you can stop and really slow down on your own time. Stare at the neck until you can see those chord shapes and then play those melodies over it. Um, 
I'll do another one. We'll just kind of move down. We did one in G that was F sharp. I'll pick a song in F and um, we'll, we'll look at some, uh, maybe a different progression and pick out that melody and just stare at it until you can see how that melody naturally flows from those chord shapes. Um, you do this enough times and you'll see how it's all connected and you can just sort of move very musically all over the fretboard. I almost said chessboard, right? Kind of like that Bobby Fischer movie, right? He knocks the pieces off. He's like, don't play until you can see it. It's that stare at that fretboard until you can see those chord shapes before you start making your moves. Um, I hope this is helpful um, and um, we'll do another one soon.